Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Baby Lock Soprano. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do stitch combinations and lettering. You can do wonderful lettering like this in different fonts. You can do large and small. You can even combine your fonts and your um, decorative stitching. Now I will suggest that if you're using a thinner fabric like your quilting cotton that you use a stabilizer behind it. This happens to be a tearaway stabilizer but you can see I just stitched out some with a zigzag how the zigzag with just no stabilizer kind of scrunches up the fabric but with the stabilizer it's nice and flat. So make sure that you use a stabilizer when you're using thinner fabric. If you're using a denim then that will, the nice thick denim doesn't need a stabilizer. Okay, so to start with, I've already got some stitches programmed in here um, in the memory, but we're gonna start out stitching this stitch, which is in the first group of the decorative mode. Now that is stitch number 54. 54 is right there. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you stitch this out because these feed dogs not only move back and forth, they also move side to side, which gives you a nice wide stitch. So let's go ahead with that. Got some stabilizer on the back of my fabric here. And notice it says use the end foot. Now the end foot, let me explain about that. Um, the end foot is different than your all-purpose J foot. The end foot has this channel here, which is going to help the thickness of the thread that you're putting in your fabric while you're sewing your decorative stitches and your lettering. It's going to help it flow right through. That's what that channel's for. So make sure you use the correct foot to get the best results. Put that on there like that. Okay, so let's, now I'm going to do just a single motif. That's what that little single heart there, that means that it's gonna be, when it's done, it's done. I'm gonna disconnect my foot control. That way I can use the start stop button. So watch what happens, here we go. Now see how it's moving to one side and it's moving back to the other side. Now, we need to keep this parallel with the side. So make sure that when you're sewing something that has a wider stitch length, and you can tell that it's gonna do that by these being grayed out, the width and length. That means that stitch is going to be doing, having some side to side motion. Make sure that your fabric doesn't twist and turn, otherwise you'll get a distorted motif. So I made sure that it didn't twist and turn. It helped that I had a smaller piece of fabric, but if you have a larger piece, just make sure, sure it stays parallel with the sides. And it stitched it out really nice. Now this is just a single motif. If I'd had numerous motifs, we'd had, we have a whole line of those. If I push this right here, yeah, we could have a whole line of those like that. Really beautiful stitch. Okay, so now I'm gonna clear that. Okay. So what we're gonna do next, I'm gonna get my piece of fabric here. And um, one thing I wanna show you about this here. This is an example of a distorted stitch. Remember there's a lot of back and forth and side to side motions. When you are, if you're having problems with that and it really depends on the type of fabric you're using, the type of stabilizer, if you have a thick batting or something, flannel or whatever, stitch out. A, an example, and if it's looking like this, you can go into your settings. I'm gonna page ahead really quickly here. Actually, I'll page back a little bit there. Okay, right here. Find vertical adjustment, find horizontal adjustment. So you can adjust this and stitch it out. Right now I have it in three. That gave me a really nice stitch without it, um, um, it, it, so that the stitches overlapped really well. So th for this particular type of fabric, that's what I did. What I'm saying is, is you can change this in settings if you need to. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spell out the word love, but I'm gonna put a heart at the beginning and a heart at the end. So I'm gonna start out with the decorative stitches, go to stitch number 49, put that right there. It gives me a whole line of, sti of those hearts. I only want one, so I'm gonna go down to here. Gives me one heart. Now I'm gonna go to the lettering. Now to know what number to put in for the lettering, we go to our quick start guide. The quick start guide 
in the back has the different fonts. And I'm going to use the, um, the block letter fonts, but if I wanted to do script letters, I just push that again. There's script letters, there's outline letters, there's Russian letters, and then there's Japanese letters. And if I push this again, I get back to um, the block letters. And block letters have the punctuation as well as lowercase letters. So I'm going to start out with L, which is number 12, capital L. I push OK. So if you're spelling out a word, push OK for the first one. After that, O, I just put it in there and I don't have to push OK. Just remember for the first one, push OK. After that, just, just type in the number of the letter. V is 48, lowercase e is 31. There we go. Now I want to put another one of these little um, hearts at the end. So I'm going to go back to decorative stitching, go to stitch number 49. There we go. So that is ready to stitch out. And I can also save this in memory if I want to. So I'll show you how to save that. You go down to this little pocket like that. It gives you this one right here, push OK, it says saving, and it's in there. Now, if I got out of that, first of all, if I got out of that stitch, it gives you a, a chance to say, are you sure you want to cancel that and get into regular stitching? Yes, I do. I would push OK for yes, but if I accidentally said, no, I don't want to do that, so I'll push clear for no. But I'm going to get out of that, yes, here we go because I want to show you how to recover, how to recall that stitch, that stitch combination we just put in there. That's this little button here. It's actually got two functions. It's going to be either this quick select keypad, or if you press it a second time, it gives you all the stitches that I have memorized in here. So I'm going to go down like this and like that. There it is. Push OK, and I've brought it back up. So that's how to uh, save stitches and to recall them, as well as how to uh, program them into your stitches. Now, keep in mind that if you misspell a word, you basically have to just push clear back into, well, I've already called that from recall, but you would have to clear it back to where you made the mistake and then re-enter the correct word. So, um, in case you want to know how to delete things, that's how you would delete it. Also, in memory, if you wanted to delete something from memory, go back in here. If you wanted to say, delete this one, and by the way, there are 15 spots, so you've got a lot of memory in here. But let's say you used up all 15 of those and you wanted to put something else into memory, then you would just simply overwrite. So you would find out the one that you wanted and overwrite that one. If I said, okay for that, uh, that was just recalling, but if I wanted to rewrite something on that, I could do that. Now let's look at this one here that I have right there. That one is um, a little stitch up here. This one right here, 42 in category one of the decorative stitches. I did one of those this way and one of them this way. That is what the way I did that was with this turnover button. So I took the turnover button, selected the stitch, and turned it over. And it works really nicely for stitches that join in the center. Now, if you have something that joins on the baseline, like that uh, little heart with a line at the bottom, if I turned that one over, there would be a jump stitch from the bottom of one heart to the top or bottom of the other one. So it works best with stitches that join in, in the middle. And some stitches don't really lend themselves to it, like 93, which is like a... Uh, spiral. You wouldn't really want to turn that one over, although you might try it out. You might invent a new stitch. That would be kind of interesting. <clears throat> but anyway, that's how I got this stitch, and it makes some really cute, um, interesting effects. Um, and then I wanted to show you one more stitch that's really kind of neat. This stitch number 69 looks a lot like these other quilting stitches. But I'm going to start it out showing you what that looks like. First of all, we're going to clear that out. Go back. Yes. Okay. We're going to go into category one of our decorative stitches and stitch 69. This is actually a quilting stitch that's like stippling, only it actually does it for you. 
So this also calls for end foot. I'm going to start right here in the middle. Hopefully it's wide enough. And then we're going to just stitch out one of those. Look how much that jumps to the side. This is all one stitch that it's doing. And if I wanted to do a whole line of those stitches or do um, a line of them and then do another line next to them, I could do an entire, well, quilt. Although uh, that'd take a, quite a while for a large quilt, but a small quilt or a little sample sampler, that would be a really cute way to do it. And once it gets to the end, it will stop, but it's got to go through all these little twists and turn and notice it goes side to side. So I'm trying to keep, make sure it stays parallel without pulling, just make sure that it's making sure that's not twisting at all. It's getting close to the end here. Wouldn't that look beautiful with a uh, metallic thread? That would look really neat. That, that, those little extra jogs, that's the feed dogs moving from one side to another. And then it moves back a little bit and forward a little bit. And this needle does move side to side a little bit. There we go. And then I just push my cutter button, lifts up the needle, and away we go. Now, this does not have a locking stitch built in because I didn't do this one here. If I'd done that, then it would have had a locking stitch built in at the end. So that is stitch number 69. One repeat of it. And so the, your machine can really do a lot of neat things. Try it out, experiment with it, see what you can do. And that, this is just on regular quilting cotton using a stabilizer behind it. So that's basic stitch combinations and decorative stitching and lettering. Um, there's a lot more that I could probably show you, but I want you to try it out on your own. So if you, this video has been helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines here on our YouTube channel. So thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.